Hi, I'm James Bradley. I'm a professor of plastic surgery and vice chairman, Department of Surgery at Northwell Health. I'm very excited to be here today. One, because we have two very brave and beautiful women that want to share their story. And two, it is today International Pronouns Day. And I want to go over our background first before we introduce you to these lovely women. So International Pronouns Day recognizes the use of proper pronouns is basic to human dignity. It's recognized by the transgender and gender nonconforming community who may feel at times vulnerable and often not safe. Alarmingly, in the last six months, there have been more trans women uh, deaths than all of 2019. So facial feminization surgery is what we're talking about. So why facial feminization surgery? There are safety concerns, of course, but we, it's our firm belief that when external appearance matches internal identity, there's confidence so women can go out and achieve their very best and become who they want to become. And this is the motivation to undergo facial feminization surgery. Today, as I mentioned, we're gonna meet two brave and beautiful women, Demi and Ruby. Historically, this started back in the 20s, believe it or not, with a famous book and movie, The Danish Girl, this is Lily L. in 1926, and how Hollywood represented her in 2015. So when we look at facial feminization surgery, there's soft tissue modifications and hard tissue modifications. And even with hormone therapy, makeup and hair, there can be misgendering. And it's one reason is because the bony modifications don't happen with hormones, but we have to consider doing something more. So let's look at the difference between male and females. Males have a more bossed forehead, angular boxy, boxy jaw, whereas the female flatter, softer features, more triangular jaw. So if we look at from the top down, forehead reshaping, you can see in the color, we prefer at Northwell to use customized virtual planning for each patient. So centrally, the frontal sinus is set back. Laterally, we contour, remove the overhanging bone, and that allows us to do a brow lift and lower hairline. So you can see that by the schematic, we change from convex to a flat surface, and on the right, we use a resorbable plate to fix this in place. So you can see schematically the subtle improvement above the nose. You can see laterally a depressed brow to a raised brow. And then if we look further down, mandibular angle, the red is removed, the lower border is removed, the chin is narrowed by removing that red bone. And then if we look again at the mid face, uh, you can see the, the benefit from this. In the mid face with nasal reshaping, you can see the forehead's modified, rhinoplasty, we adjust the bridge, tilt the nose up, genioplasty, the chin shaping, and even tracheal shave where we remove the Adam's apple. All these are important, but we wanted to look kind of scientifically at are we achieving our goals? Are we are patients then able to pass as female? So to do that, we use artificial intelligence. Neural networks are fed millions of images and input a, a figure to allow them to assess whether this is female or male gender and the confidence. What we found was that it, the computer recognized male and female gender very accurately, but preoperatively 50% or more, about half, were misgendered, but postoperatively they were close to females. So this was very interesting, but it's also not computer we're looking at, but people. So we use a platform crowdsourcing for, that offered thousands of people their public opinion, and we saw a similar result in which the postoperative FFS were gendered similar to the cis female. This is all background, but we're here today really to introduce you to two uh, amazing women. The first I want to introduce you to is Demi. So she is, you'll find, uh, looks like a model, but is very uh, beautiful person inside and very strong-willed, so I think you'll enjoy hearing her story. And then next will be Ruby, again, equally as, as uh, remarkable. Uh, what, I, what I expect and predict is that they'll have an influence on others that will want to become their authentic self. So I want to introduce you first to Demi, who's gonna come up here and tell her story, but thank you for listening to the background. Demi, would you like to come up? Good morning, all. 
I'm Demi, and I'm extremely happy to share my story with you. So I have been on my journey of transitioning for the past five years. I moved here to New York in pursuit of that very thing, to really live authentically as myself. And that's why I find that this is such an amazing um, day, uh, such a remarkable um, experience this is to speak on pronoun day, um, where a lot of my sisters, as we call ourselves in the trans community, um, oftentimes are misgendered and most times than none, these individuals are also members of extremely marginalized groups of people um, where their neighborhoods may not be as safe. And so to have a procedure like facial feminization, also known as FFS, um, can really honestly save the lives of many of my trans sisters because some people just don't have um, just the Honestly, they don't have the goal to live authentically as we do, and um, they also lack um, empathy, right, with other individuals that may not live or walk the same life that they do. So um, I definitely am so grateful for the partners with Northwell Health as well as the work of Dr. James Bradley um, because I feel extremely happy with the um, post-op effects of FFS. So. It's a little bit about myself and my experience with um, this procedure. Thank you very much. Thank I, you. I forgot to mention on a, on a personal note what a wonderful experience it was for me to take care of Demi and Ruby, and I learned so much from, from this, so I'm, I'm grateful for them to have that opportunity. And next I want to introduce you to Ruby, who will come up and uh, say a few words. Ruby. Hi, good morning. My name is Ruby Lacroix, and I am starting to be a medical professional for Northwell Health, and this is really important for me because this was life's changing. This surgery helped me in so many ways to feel authentic, and it's, it's kind of emotional because a lot of us are denied jobs. There's so many things we cannot get because our outside might not match the inside. And this is when Dr. James Bradley came in and I was doing my research and as I saw the um, reconstructive procedures they perform on children and I saw the maxillofacial um, work on these people and I thought that it was amazing. And that's what really you know, inspired me, and I said, I will give it a try. I believe that this should be something that we should normalize, and I believe that it could save lives, because lives are at stake. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, it should not be so hard for trans individuals to find care. A lot of us are lacking care, and I I truly am truly grateful. I'm truly grateful for everything that Dr. Bradley did for me. Thank you very much. So now you can see how beautiful they are, but uh, most importantly, I really appreciate their bravery, not just to, to undergo something like this, but to come out here today and share that with you. It takes a lot, and we I think uh, a lot of people will learn from that. So their message is that with facial feminization surgery, with all the things that it takes to be feminine, to feel feminine, it allows them and may allow others to live their authentic life, and we're here at Northwell Health to help with that. We have a transgender center both in Long Island and in Manhattan. Uh, we're dedicated to work with, with patients to, to achieve these goals and to help in any way we can. Thank you very much for tuning in, appreciate it. Uh, now, please feel free to uh, text us any questions. We'll be happy to address them either to Ruby, to me, myself. Um, we're here for any questions. Thank you very much. Uh, so, um, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, questions that um, are commonly uh, asked or it's like why undergo it and I think the personal stories you can see how emotional it is 
every patient's a little bit different. Uh, the important thing is to uh, look inside and figure out what are the reasons you want to undergo that. So there's a lot of different questions and we're here for you. If, if you have personal questions, um, it's something that's offered now. It's something that seems to be evolving and new and asked for more and more. And it's becoming more and more accepted in the community, accepted uh, often with insurance insurances because they recognize the need for this. So again, thanks for tuning in. We're happy to, again, to ask, answer any questions in the future. Thank you very much.